masterclass from Fnatic. They will lock themselves. Seven time of trying. Excel will be Fnatic with the comeback. Be your number one team in the regular season. Rogue are on top once more, but they have fallen at the last hurdle in playoffs time and time again. Is 2022 the year they finally win it all? First, they will have to prove themselves against everybody's Fresh biggest song. surprise of spring, the strong. Misfits. I think Rogue is a really good team against weaker opponents. They are still a good team in best of five, but not as good as regular season. BTO looks for the back line. Flag it. For Misfits, I just feel like it's VTO one-man army. The fact that they don't have a lot of threats makes me not so concerned about playing Misfits. Here comes the Jinx Rocket! Not again, not again, not again, not again! This year is like very different. We have a good moment and we, we just play like we always do. The they are still untouched! A double for him! The second time Misfits take a game from the jaws of defeat! Yeah, our early games haven't been the cleanest, and I think if we are able to look back on them, we can also improve. Honestly, it's everyone's game at the moment. The longest standing rivalry in Europe's history, but with two brand new lineups. Who will stand tall above the other? With a difference in play styles, this will make for a clash to remember. I refuse to lose. I think more than anyone, I know that what I did last year was not good enough. We keep getting better and better, and for playoffs we can be unstoppable. And now it's the Hillisang show. Hillisang did not give them an inch. But they have to play with a solo kill in the top lane. We are playing mostly for top lane. Broken Blade is the best top lane in the league, so it kind of makes sense. Last time we played with G2, they tried to salvage spot, but it was already too late. Three for three! This man can't miss! I would like to play against them when they play through their top side and see if we can carry harder. Fnatic is kind of keeping the same style of last year, of just going bot, 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 and extra bot. He's going to end the season with 11 deaths, the new death record of all time. So uh, when we go up against Fnatic, just shut down Hulusang, shut down Upset, maybe give him a few more deaths, and we're good to go. I refuse to lose, I refuse to lose. We're just all confident that we are good enough to win. Maybe we lose game one in playoffs, but the rest of the games we're winning. Not winning would just be a failure. I refuse to lose. I refuse to lose. XL's first ever appearance in playoffs will be against Europe's latest supposed yeah. super team. Interestingly, XL won both matchups against Vitality. And the question is whether the playoffs buff will be a reality or will XL continue their domination over Vitality? I think we had a lot of struggles. Every week we played a different game, and I think that was the biggest issue of regular split. They got the jungler, but the fight can oh, summon for Vitality. That's a massive NAR ultimate, and Perks just blows them apart. I'm kind of known to get a playoffs buff, right? So I'm really looking forward to playoffs. It's going to be very fun. From what we see in regular split, is that Excel has only one playstyle, right? Hopefully, they will keep doing exactly the same so we can prepare against them easily. But I don't think they are that dumb. We're not very explosive, it's just that there isn't a response to slow and steady. I would say an explosive playstyle is more easy to get figured out. Oh, Perks! Really not the play he was looking for. Now, Afari's gonna be in trouble. Perks coming over the wall, tries to turn it, but Patrick still running forward. Massive play for Excel. Lovrop goes all the way in with that Zenith play. Cost him his life, but manages to pick up Marcuni. Here comes Nuta. Oh, Afari out. is going to die! Patrick with the Shotgrims rips Vitality apart. I have had my focus on winning the split from the start, and now we've made playoffs, which was just like step one in the plan, you know? The wildfire is spreading. Who will win it all and who will crumble? The spring playoffs are here. That they are, and I am very happy to be joined on the desk by Cadrill and Vedius for our first and second series of the weekend. We're kicking it off with Rogue versus Misfits. How are you guys feeling? Well, I'm excited. I feel like that we have you the best excited. possible 
playoffs that we could have asked for based on how the regular season has gone. I think we've got a lot of very competitive teams, mm. and I'm very excited to see what... Because we've had quite a break, one of the longer breaks that we normally don't get. It was get. great. I got all my Lost Ark in. That's Kendrick <laughs> finished Elden Ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think it was going to happen, but it did. But it's true, because the LCK playoffs, they finished their games on Sunday, and then they Indeed, started playing started, on Wednesday, yeah. right? Yep. So there was a three-day break. This time, a three-week break straight into this series. And I think these are the top six teams we expected to make it into playoffs. Draft Jinx banned away here by Rogue. Not too surprising considering how much Neon has played it. Yeah, definitely. Both these AD carries playing a lot of Jinx as they were. Of course, Jinx Aphelios was the meta. Two mid lane bans already from Misfits, Vic uh, Victor and TF. I think maybe they're dropping a Rise ban here last. Otherwise, this might be a bit confusing if this first pick comes in from Rogue. I'm curious as to what the priority will be here for Rogue. Of course, top point five. Not the most dramatic of patches in terms of changes. There are a lot of small changes across the board, and I'm very curious as to how teams have adapted and developed. Something that we heard from Oduamne was that coming into playoffs last year, one of the struggles that they had was that they had a, a bad read on the meta at their very first week of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, will, will we see that adaptation, or will we see them uh, come in with something fresh and strong? Already, it seems that the priority wow. will be the Caitlyn down towards the bot side of the map. We have seen Comp bring this out before, but already Rogue showcasing a little bit more of a bot side for Strap. Really interesting, of course, because things like Rise are up. You could first pick a jungler with Lee Sin Hecarim down, mid lane bans, but no, they opt into the Caitlyn. We'll see what Misfits have in an answer. You could look for something like Jin. Aphelios lane could work. In Eastern regions, we're seeing a lot of Nautilus on the 1 2, so Rogue may be looking for a Lux on 2 3. Zaya, of course, a lot of Lethality. Zeri did get touched again in 12.5b, but it's going to be picked up here. Yeah, still a relatively strong AD carry. Zeri does everything you want her to do, and we've seen Neon pilot it very well through the course of the season. That bot lane focus from Rogue is something we've also seen them do in spring. Caitlyn Lux, very common from this team to get pushed down towards that bottom lane and then translate that pressure on the rest of the map. Yeah, and if this Sinzao get does get locked in here, it did get a little nerf, right? Its ultimate is now four seconds instead of five. And this is just the kind of tendency pros have. When a when a meta shift comes in, it's very common for them to stick to what was previously working because they still haven't dissected or figured out the patch. So it's natural after one or two weeks of a patch, you go for something that you're default and you're comfortable on. Rogue maybe gonna match it with some kind of Jarvan pick, expecting a Lux here perhaps as well. I was wondering if they would consider the Volley Bear. I think that we it's something that we have seen a few times already from Malrang and also yeah. really sets up nicely for those tower dives if you want to try and threaten that uh, that early pressure. But for now, they are just going to stick with this very early gank-focused jungler in the form of Jarvan. Offers that initial form of engage, will provide a solid front line. And I think that when going for a raid support, you need to find that somewhere else on the map. So Rogue already locking in themselves a strong core, already suggesting a very bot side focus game plan. And one thing we haven't seen yet is Jace, another very huge pick in the LCK and the LPL. Early rotation Jace, one twoing Jace, even first picking it. But yeah, like you said, both teams playing towards the bot side. And if you think of Rogue in previous le uh, years, previous iterations of Rogue, it's all about winning lanes, pushing lanes to facilitate jungle. And Malrang on an early game jungler, Ganker, inspired, was more so of a farming player. These pushing lanes to help him farm, whereas Malrang wants to be a bit more proactive. So expecting Rogue to get some more pushing lanes here. And Misfits trying to answer that pushing lane in the bottom lane with a bit of engage for themselves. Leona, if she can get on top of this, Lux will be able to burst her very quickly alongside the Zeri, but it is going to be a struggle for Neon and Mercer, and the expectation is, as we've mentioned, that Rogue will be looking towards that bottom lane. Well, we continue to see this focus thrown towards Larson in the mid lane. It was interesting when the analyst test talked about the fan MVP versus the shadow MVP of these yeah. two mid laners. Misfits very clearly showcasing their respect to Larson, someone who has been tried and true, very consistent throughout the regular season, a strong staple and a core component of Rogue, and they're trying to limit what he has comfort on. A lot of criticism has been thrown to, is he just a control mage player? But I think Larson is here to demonstrate that he has more tools in his toolkit. Yeah, and if mid more mid lane bans come out here, we're expecting things like maybe Akali, Corky, uh, Syndra, I think like rises Syndra, Ari, as well. definitely rise up as well. Orianna, of course, as well, but 
some Corky is also. I bring up board of the LCK a lot of times here, but they have played playoffs and they have been playing Corky still. Yep. So even though that's been nerfed, it hasn't been seen in Europe. But with this many mid bands, it opens up a wide variety. I mean, all the nerf to Corky really did is change the way you have to play around the packages. Maybe you delay taking a dragon for that package to be up so that you can look for a little bit more damage. Now, so far we see Misfits have got engaged tools. They've locked in their bottom lane and their jungler. Rogue have locked in bot and jungle as well. What sort of picks do you think they need to round out these comps? I think Akali is really powerful right now with these bands for both sides. One, it's good against things like Jarvan for escape tools and it has a lot of mobility. And it could also be good for Rogue in terms of dealing with the backline of the enemy comp, buying time for the rest of your team. Nar makes sense with the cannon ban, taking away one of the counters. I mean, there's still things like Jace up and Camille, so I don't think Godwamni will have a very big issue with picking top lane here, but I'm looking at mobile champs here for either side. Now this could be spicy. We've, we have Lucian. heard a lot about Ooh. Lucian, both as a flex, but also predominantly as a top laner at the moment. So Showmaker played Lucian mid in the LCK. Um, so maybe this is a Lucian mid blind pick for Larson, or it's a Lucian top counter to the Nar. It could be either right now. It did get small buffs, of course. <gasps> and Rumbles. Oh, 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 yeah. Rumble as well. Oh, okay. Rumble. Wow, so for those that don't know, Odo Amne is a long school player. Long school, old school player. He's been playing League for a really long time competitively, and Rumble used to be one of his go-to picks. Rumble, Cannon, AP Tops were some of his tried and true. And with Lucian coming back into it, let's not forget when Lucian was the meta mid lane pick, it was Larson's champion. Yep. It was something that he had a lot of strong success on. And now they're going to bring in that AP flexibility in the top side. And now you've got a very old school Wombo combo, Jarvan Rumble, yep. the <laughs> classic strong team fighting tools. Yeah, and they've lost pick Zoe here, so they can target that pretty easily. We talked about Rogue and pushing lanes. Well, there's three pushing lanes for Malrang to play around. As much as their comp is very good at getting those winning lanes, their only AP is in the top side on the Rumble. You're playing Lucian, Jarvan, Caitlyn into things like Sinzao Nar. So that could backfire if the game goes later on against champions like Zoe and Zeri with big range as well. So we'll see how the game plays out. Misfits, good team fight, a little bit of early game with the Zinzao, but it's all Rogue in the early stages, I think. And that's kind of how we've seen these two teams play throughout the course of Spring. Rogue getting early game leads and then snowballing away from their opponents. Misfits falling behind, but finding picks, finding ways back through team fights. That is what this composition will be able to do well and thrive in. The question is, can they fight back against Rogue here? Yeah, I think 3v3 bot side is going to be so important. If the Leona can find the Lux lane and get that push and stop them from being able to take tower plates, that can kind of neutralize a lot of the early game for Rogue. Yeah, I am a little concerned if Rogue do fall behind in the early game. I think their composition is a little harder to execute overall, but I think the Rogue have showcased that if they have pushing lanes, they know how to play around them. Uh, we're going to see what that break has done to both these teams. Will we see the same quality that we saw during the regular season, or will we see different expectations? Uh, it's going to be an exciting one. I cannot wait to see both these teams jump onto the rift, and Medic, we're not going to have to wait much longer. It has been a long time coming. Three weeks in the wilderness, but now the LEC playoffs begin. And what a way to start off oh, ho, ho. the spring playoffs as Misfits look for something down towards the bottom lane, trying to work their way around Vision. Lucent Singularity was popped out there by Trimby and he will be spotted on that ward and spot the ward himself, meaning he can make a tactical retreat. Yeah, looking for a cheeky level one there, Misfits. Maybe if they get Trimby's flash in the early stages, that stops a lot of the pushing power that they might have. So creative, we've seen level ones happen a lot more throughout the past couple of years. I mean, why not, right? Yes, you can stand and you can mark, but if you've got a creative idea of five manning through bot brush, getting a ward, five manning top brush, anything like that, you may as well go for it. Information always very valuable in the other game, figuring out where you want to go as a jungler. And I think our expectations are that Malrang will be looking to pass towards the bot side of the maps, often with Caitlyn lanes. Funnily enough, I remember your XL game from many years ago. The split map was a very common strategy yeah. when trying to uh, free up the Caitlyn and give her as much, uh, well, freedom as possible during the early laning phase. You would think that, but looking at Malrang, I think he might path top. And the reason why is because Odoamne is running Ignite, so he needs a good early oh, base. Oh, good spot. That so is they're going to play for heavy top side. I think they can early dive top pretty easily. 
easily with Ignite, Comet, Rumble, poking out the Gnar. So maybe that's their plan or getting a good base on Hirid. The last thing I'll say is first strike Javan. Not a very common thing. We see Conquerors, we see Electrocutes, but I looked at Malrang's solo queue account. It's all first strike. He's top 15 on the ladder right now. He's playing Graves first strike. Jarvan, he's playing Zin Zhao, Lee Sin, all first strike. He thinks this rune, I think, is very strong. I remember at the beginning of the year, this was actually the go-to rune on many junglers. I, I remember like Kiana specifically because of the additional damage that it also can provide as well. Um, seeing it come back is always an interesting thing uh, to keep track of. We'll keep an eye on that. But the Ignite playing towards topside, this is not something that Rogue is typically well known for. We did see stints of it last Last year during the regular season where they tried to be a lot more topside focused but especially with a draft like this I was not expecting this let's see how Rogue play it out. Malrang going for the fast level three so I mean this must be something they practice in scrims if they're busting out the rumble in game one of playoffs and they've got Ignite Comet and Odoamne is stacking the wave he's playing aggressive on the trades as well so if Malrang wants to just skip blue and go top here Odo could fast push a wave and look for a dive it's all about timings but if you look at the pings Malrang's gonna move into Shlatan's jungle has a ward on his raptors can take those away. Keep an eye on the mini-map as well. And I'm just going to actually bring this up if I can find the right button. Here we have, look, you can see this ward set up in the river to make sure that the bot lane has information as to where an enemy jungle gank could come. They have pressure in mid, they have pressure in top, and it all comes back to what we've always been talking about with Rogue. Utilizing their strong early push to look for early plays, and they have their eyes set on the top lane. We wondered how much the meta would change in the two-week break we've had. Well, Rogue have decided top lane, and now the focus. Hibbit with a good dash away, Larson looking for the chase, and Hibbit is just able to walk out of that one. Will lose two waves to the towers, Trimby's caught and loses his life. Slatten tanks oh. it, comp gets a double buff in response. Rogue get away with murder there because they just gave VTO a free base. They gave a kill over to Misfits on bot lane anyway. They, luckily it was a one for one for them because they should have known bot side was the focus for Misfits in the early stages when Rogue is trying to dive top. No, comp. Sir. comp still has flash, still has cleanse, uses it after the shield of Daybreak Sutton and that red buff is going to do so much work for him here. Can actually chase back in, force Neon and Mercer back. So the top lane dive ends up forcing Hirit back and gives Odo Omni a small advantage. Hasn't chosen to go back to base yet, but you made a great point there, Kedrol, about the fact that VTO got that... Oh, hang Hirit. on, Hirit! The Ignite. He's dead. the Ignite's gonna tick! And so is Hirit, Odo Omni with the solo kill. Oh no, Hirit. This is something we saw a lot from him during the regular season, getting caught out, solo dying in the 1v1, and he falls short once again. But let's have a look at Schlatter on this play. So how does Rogue fall for this? Because they know he's bot side. They've just spotted him, but they're still walking up. Trimby made Maybe didn't really look at the map for a split second there because he had a lot of time to react. Flashes away after Mercer puts the initial engage in. Nice sidestep on the W flash from Schlatan, but still ends up falling. Luckily for them, it's a one for one when your whole top side's diving top. Your play is to play safe. Unfortunately, they were caught off guard this time around, but it was a one for one in the end. And it was, and because of that early sequence of events and Oduwane being able to get a kill off towards the top side, he's developed himself a slight CS lead, and Rogue have about an 800 gold lead early on in this game. Of course, lots of ways for Misfits to strike back, but it is a strong early start here for Rogue. The only other win Misfits got out of that was because Larson committed to top, VTO got a free base. Uh, no, he didn't base, sorry, he didn't have to TP back. Larson had to base and TP mid, but VTO still has it. So you look at Larson's HP and the amount of potions he's got, he now needs to base, but VTO can keep up in tempo mid. So pretty even there in such a difficult lane in the early stages. It certainly is. You can see as well, the bot lane now leveraging the opportunity that Marang's in the bot side of the map to leverage that push. Odoamne going for that quick reset. will actually secure himself the Gromp as well. Uh, that wave in the top side, I think it is slow pushing back towards Odoamne because I'm pretty certain that he got it underneath the tower. So Rogue's wave's looking pretty good. As you already mentioned, Larson is the only one falling ever so slightly short. But even with this TP advantage, I'm not entirely sure what VTO can do with it in these early stages, especially with the sheer amount of pressure. Perhaps they can look to get a deep ward in. Maybe he can set up for a flank. Maybe Maybe they can just use it to TP back to lane a little bit earlier and look for a quick roam. He has a couple of options, but in terms of crazy plays on the Zoe, I think he's a little limited. Yeah, just TP back to lane to match Lucian's tempo. Has a little bit of a level lead because he crashed that wave, but Misfit's still focusing towards the bot side. The benefit they have from that bot play is even though it went one for one and that's not what you want, you took Trimby Summoner, so you can always look for a replay. Mercer with the Hex Flash, of course, just provides that little bit more threat towards that bottom lane. And it's why we see Malvang spending so much time in this bottom quadrant of the map. He knows he needs to be there to answer a possible fight from Misfits. Yeah, and Rogue historically, Rogue this bit, pushing lanes as good as it is because you get advantages in the lane itself. It's very hard to juggle sometimes as Malvang. You can see his early play now comes to fruition where he goes top early, make sure Odo's ahead, leave him in isolation and play more towards bot so Kate and Lux can get the push. Larson has a little bit of vision to work with and now they can start forcing these early objectives. And we will say that Misfits, they weren't known for 
for their early game dominance. When we think back to a lot of their successes during the regular season, a lot of it came from late game team fights or a very impressive comeback wins. Uh, you kind of look at their average win time, yeah. 35 minutes. They had one of the longest average during the regular season. You contrast that to Rogue, actually very controlled, very good at closing out those games. And it was something that we debated. Will Misfits be able to handle the early game pressure? So far, Schlatan's doing a pretty solid job of matching that early aggression. And if you just look at both these teams throughout the entire split, the junglers are polar opposites as well, I feel like. Schlatan more so of a farming jungler, didn't really have too much jungle proximity to run his team. You see 10th on jungle proximity, and although Malranx is quite low, I think he does look for a lot of options, whether it's creative plays, creative pathings. He's always looking for things, and you can see it in the CSD as well, right? Malranx 10th in CSD, always giving up camps. So I think those two junglers' playstyles reflect how the teams do in the early stages. And there was a debate sort of coming into the second half of the season as to whether Malranx had started to be worked out by his opposing junglers. We saw Zanzara tracking him fairly well in the first loss that Rogue suffered at the hands of Astralis throughout spring. And it seems like, although they are doing a very similar thing as they did the entirety of the season, Malrang has been able to be in the right position at the right time so far this game. Yeah, definitely hard to figure out. You can say he's one-dimensional because he looks for crazy plays and he falls behind, but he's shown Hecarim, he's shown Farming Jungers, yeah. he's shown Rumble last year when he subbed in for Damwon. So he's got a plethora of champions he can play and his solo queue account shows it as well. I mean, I'm sure he's playing them in scrims too. So Rogue might be able to swap it up in the best of fives. But for now, they're sitting with a decent lead, as expected with these winning lanes. Have a Dragon. Herald spawning in 10 seconds, though. So you can see Larson's taking a base. We'll see if Trimby wants to base and move topside as well to help out his jungler secure this early objective. Importantly, though, Mercer is six. So if Misfits look to recall and start a fight around that Rift Hell, they do have the advantage of that ultimate from oh. Mercer. Neon not yet level six. That ace in the hole doing a lot of work. And looks like Neon might be left alone here for a moment. Mercer does decide to cancel his recall. It's important to note that Mercer has hit level six, as you mentioned, but is also looking for this Herald play. This is often around the time where teams will be looking to contest that, wanting to get the early base so he can get that uh, quick rotation over. Rogue now have a choice. Do they try and match that, or do they just continue pushing bot? Do they instead just try and secure as many plates as possible onto comp in this early phase? I just want to highlight something Malrang just did. He just pulled the Herald. He knows Herald's water that they watered over the wall, so he pulled the Herald and ran top. So for Misfits' vision, if they didn't have a ward in the river brush, it looks like he's just starting Herald. But instead, he pulls it out and runs top for a gank. Fortunately, it was warded, so he's just going to go back to the Herald. But like I said, level 6 Leona on the way. Schlatan on the way. VTO and Larson matching each other as well. Misfits just forcing their way in here. And the big question is, where do Trimby and Comp go on this reset? Do they just go bot lane and look for plates to try and answer and keep, you know, Misfits guessing around this Rift Herald? It looks like Comp is going to go down and Trimby's going to join the rest of the team. That's the problem they had. They had to match support tempo, but they're a little bit behind. So Trimby's running out of base, but they don't really have a wave to play on either because, of course, he tried to match the Leona. So now both supports will just stare at each other in mid and we'll see who pulls the trigger first into River. Larson's just going to get blue. But now I wonder if, like, we're thinking too many layers deep because as we rightly identified, Trimby wasn't level six yet. If he had gone back to base and actually matched the tempo, yep. he would have been a level down. If he tried to take that fight, there would have been a deficit. Maorang draws out the Herald. He then looks for gang top, draws out the Herald again. And to me, it felt like that while that was happening, Oduamnu was pushing in top, yep. Larson was pushing in mid. And they were trying to make Misfit sweat to buy time for Trimby to be able to get that level up and then rotate up to this team. Now they have numbers to be able to match. You can see Oduamnu still has the push in top lane, just hits level nine, has the Ignite available. And I think Rogue is now in a much better position to look for the fight. Yeah, but Misfits have a pretty strong 4v4 if here it has Meganar. The most important factor here is Mercer has with the team, but Trimpy split off, so it's two members toward the top side for Rogue, and they're just gonna try to force their way in. Vito dodges away from Binding Zone, they're coming down, but look at the damage, the final spark's gonna do so much. Vito dashes forward, but is met with his demise. Odo takes the kill. The Equalizer doing so much work, and Rogue win the fight. Now we see the power of the top jungle combo that Rogue have drafted. The Rumble ult on top of the Jarvan ult. Vito could not move, and he ends up falling. One kill in the favor of Rogue, and although they use their ultimates, Misfits are Forced to back. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. You yeah. know, uh, Jarvan ultimate into Rumble ultimate. It's not super complicated, but it works if it can land. And in that narrow choke point, the fact that VTO lost his flash early made it so much easier for Rogue to set up that wombo combo and come out on top. And now with this Herald, they're going to have so much map control. They can use it to break top lane open. They can look to feed more gold into the Kate lane. They could give more resources to the Lucian. They have options of planning. Just look at Oduamne right now. 30 CS up, going to get a tower plate. They could have Herald the top to get this Rumble even further ahead. Head, but I think Rogue recognized, let's start getting the cage in the head now because the rumble is so strong. Rogue a bit spits here, Trimby Q flashes, but Vito has to flash it. So now he's saying, guys, guys, Zoe no flash. So everyone jumps on top of the Zoe. Luxult, Jarvanult, Rumble ult, Lucian ult. 
Zoe ends up falling, and Hirid was just way too split up. He couldn't actually join the rest of the team. And although Misfits were clumped up as three, Rogue found the opportunity very well. I'm actually really impressed with how that all came together, because you could see that Maorang, I think one of the issues we saw at the end of the regular season was coordination, communication within Rogue in terms of their actual team fight execution. But that was very crisp, yeah. very clean. Trimby makes a play, he gets VTO's flash, and then all of a sudden Maorang has a game plan, and the rest of the team is ready to follow up. So well executed there from Rogue. The early advantage goes in favor of Rogue for the time being, but I'm never going to count Misfits out. We've seen them multiple times come back from massive deficits before, and right now it's only a 1k gold deficit. They still have options later on into the game. So for the nap, for the time being, being in a 1k deficit, not the end of the world to miss it. Yeah, the early stage right now, they have two options. One, go topside and shut down Oduamne, try to get the kill. He has flash, yes, but you have good setup to do so. Maybe get that shutdown, but then again, you're giving up Drakes and the Kate and Lux will get ahead. So it's kind of like, find the play that loses you the least as, as best you can. You know, the, you've got two bad plays happening. Top's getting pushed in, bot's getting pushed in. Which play do you match to lose the least? And for now, they're just hovering around the bot side around this dragon. VTO, no flash. It's so hard for him to walk up and contest midwaves when there's a Jarvan on the enemy team. Of course, Trimby did burn his flash in that previous fight at the Rift Herald as well. So there is a point of weakness on Rogue. If you can get a solar flare on top of him, it's going to be very hard for him to get away. But we saw him burn his flash early on in the game as well. And although he did fall, they weren't really able to capitalize on that again Here after the initial play. VTO Ooh. with the heal just out of range of the Cataclysm. <laughs> oh, you could see Malrang was smashing the Arky. <laughs> and that's the problem VTO has. He has to use heal there just to run away and get the move speed. He cannot contest mid waves whatsoever. So the mid lane. Misfits can never really get pushed, so Rogue dominate both sides of the river right now. Mercer's trying to hover to try and get some kind of vision. So uh, definitely Rogue favorite for now. Ever so slight small pivot, as I have noticed this chem tank coming out from the Javan as well. Uh, it's something that we haven't really seen for a very long time, mainly because it was the classic, you know, Sterax score drinker was the go-to, of course, with the changes to Sterax. Jarvan's build in particular was one that got hit quite a lot, but by seeing this now tank your itemization, also allowing you to close the gap a little bit more, makes it potentially easier to set up for the EQ combo. I can see the logic, There's and so play. far it's working well for Mara. It's a play about to happen, you have to feel. It's Rito coming out, Odo Omne on the top lane, oh, forces wow. it away. One thing I was I wondering, because VTR has TP here, maybe mm. they were going to look to try and collapse on this bottom lane. Yeah, it's still 30 seconds though, till the Unleashed TP is available. Herald's gonna get popped, they're gonna get some plates, but they won't get the full towers. Going back to that chem tank point, I think it might be because he's not running Conqueror that he doesn't go Gore Drinker. Just That's goes first point, strike, yeah. so he just go full tank and be a beefy frontline and just set up for your team. Bro, gonna put that Herald down, get plates, both side lanes pushing in, maybe gonna look for a dragon now. It makes sense in the context of the game. And ultimately, that's his job, right? Just to be a frontline. He's got yeah. more than enough damage coming across the board. Um, and I'm keeping my eye on this Lux throughout the game as well. I know you mentioned that in terms of AP damage, Rogue is a little bit in lacking, but that is where Lux, if she's able to land her skills, yeah, can true. actually compensate for, assuming that she can get the gold, of course. But we'll keep track of that as the game progresses. We have obviously talked a lot about Rogue in terms of their control in the early game. By and large, because they did find themselves with a lot of winning lanes and a lot of the agency for them comes down to this early game. I'm now also thinking about later on into the game as we transition from this early into the mid game about how this like misfits composition works in terms of team fights. One of the things I noticed is like when you have a Caitlyn Lux, you have a lot of range on your side, but also when you have uh, the Zeri and you have the uh, just Zeri Neon Neon Zeri, yeah, <laughs> 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 um, uh, Zeri and uh, the Zoe you also have a lot of range yourself. So I'm very curious actually as to how these sites will play out. Will you try and leverage your poke if you're misfits? Uh, or will you actually try and look for flanks and try and go for an all-in team fight? I'm curious as to actually their approach in terms of how they want to try and contest Rogue around these neutrals. Yeah, I guess it just depends on who gets the setup really, because if yeah. misfits have the setup, Rogue are walking into bubbles. And if Rogue have the setup, misfits point, are walking yeah. into traps, right? So it's going to be a contest non-stop burst. I'm looking for Trimby. Flash onto Trimby. Maorang staying around. Wind becomes lightning. He's going to hit and the chase is on. Trimby down. Schlatan will chase Maorang out. Misfits using the dragon to try and pull Rogue around the map. Now, Comp does still have the flash and has the cleanse and has Maorang waiting around the corner. Misfits will call off the die. So VTO just drops midwave to make sure he's on the bot side play straight away. And Misfits are the ones who can always pull the trigger on Rogue's bot lane, whereas Maorang is the engage for them if they want to make their own play. So that E just following through on the Trimby. I think Schlatan didn't have his E up. So when he W flashed, I was a bit worried the Trimby was going to live there, but he ends up falling, going to force the dragon. They're going to get first tower of the game as well. So now Misfits, like you said, Vedius, they've been a comeback already. This early game was so disastrous for them, but now they're back in it. Really explosive play from Misfits once again, and a lot of, of it off the back of Mercer looking for these engages. He has been the key engage tool for Misfits, as you'd expect a Leonis B, and I wondered perhaps if they thought Maorang had recalled here and were looking for the fight. Yeah, definitely. So what happens here is Mercer just no fear whatsoever goes in. Shlatan W flashes, but he just eat the Drake, so I thought that the Lux would actually live. Luckily, Neon can gap close pretty quickly, and Vito's here just to cover. 
make sure that the team is fine, gives up the mid wave, and they get objectives out of it. So not only do they get the first tower onto the Zeri, which has two kills now, but they get a dragon as well to slow down any kind of soul that Rogue wants to snowball in this early stage. Yeah, some mechanics in League do make me laugh. You know, the fact that that E from Leona connects and it just like follows, you know, <laughs> homing Leona flying through the air. Hey, this is Leona, Blade of Diana, and she has not known defeat. Okay. I see. You don't get that because you haven't got <laughs> to the boss in Elder Ring yet. Okay, okay. I, I was like so confused. I was like, what does she have to do with Diana? Anyway, um, so Misfits have already been able to close the goal gap just a little bit. Right now, they are setting up around this mid lane, looking to contest the next Herald, but Rogue have set up a trap. Yeah, looking to try and fight this one. Neon, though, sitting on Trinity Force Tiamat already on this Zeri. And although she has been hit with a couple of nerfs across the last few patches, she can still dominate a game if she gets ahead. I think Misfits are in a very comfortable spot right now. Yeah. 1k gold deficit, roughly, but the Zeri is actually even or ahead right now in gold against the Caitlyn, which I wouldn't expect to happen with this kind of draft. Yes. Here it is behind, but again, he's just a frontliner on one. Solar Flare on two. Schwartz on for the chase. Neon going in as well, but the equalizer is going to do a lot of work here. Trimby Force away. Auto Omni diving in. Mauman's already killed off Mercer. Slice is going low as well. The Cataclysm locking them into the pit as the VTO now joins the fray. The culling from the side from Larson. Now the chase is on. Larson flashes forward, and Misfits dived in, but then they die. Misfits found a beautiful engage, but the turnaround from Rogue was even better. That narrow choke point, the ultimate from Odo Omni doing so much work to just tear Misfits apart, give Rogue a resounding teamfight win. Was Mercer's Leona ultimate blind there? I didn't see a I ward on was. their side. I the, really think the, it the was. The most confusing thing is, yes, if you're blind, you're in a bush and you hit two people, great, but VTO wasn't anywhere nearby, Hirits wasn't anywhere nearby, and Neon has to commit into almost melee range to try to follow up, so Rogue are happy with that. Like you said, a choke against Rumble. They're just going to melt, and that's what happened. Rogue get the fight. Larson was fancying himself a red buff, so he's going to have to settle for the Herald. Top wave's going to crash. Good map state for Rogue. Once again, Odo Omne on this Rumble finds a great equalizer. They see Rumble step in. How did they... Yeah, I guess the Lux E cast gave them vision yeah, gives them in vision. the bush, and it lingered yeah. for so long that he felt like they were there still. So, like, let's look at the map. Schlatan is there, Neon is there, yes, but look where Vito is. He's nowhere near. Here he's still channeling his TP, and two people are already dead, so... Over committing into the Rumble ult, and they pay the price. Comp's positioning there as well. It, again, you talked about it earlier, Kedril, about who gets to set up first on objectives, but in particular around these choke points, Caitlyn Traps, Rumble Ultimate, Jarvan Ultimate, there are uh, Lux abilities. There are so many things that if you funnel into these narrow chokes, it just becomes so easy for Rogue to be able to play the fight. And given that they were able to convert into the numbers advantage even quicker than Misfits, they were able to find themselves a big team fight win and as well the Herald to boot. Definitely does, and they can use that Herald mid to crack open the rest of the map. Oduamna is going to ult top wave. Another big problem Misfits have right now is Hirit is behind. Yes, he has Merc Treads to deal with Oduamna's rumble, but they're matching Larson into Hirit. So you can see Hirit's running away from bots right now because he's against two AD champions in the Lucian and the Jarvan. So what Rogue's going to do is they know Misfits' only side laner is this magic resistance Nar. Vitio has to stay around mid, so this side lane pressure from Rogue is going to get very, very difficult for Misfits to deal with. Of course, Lucian very good at taking down towers that. Light Slinger passive, giving him the double shots each time he uses an ability. Clears the waves, clears the turrets very quickly. It was very hard for Malrank, uh, for Hirit, sorry, to answer in that oh. top lane. Ace in the hole goes out, Vito takes That's half so his health. That's so annoying, man. Yeah. What an annoying yeah, he just combo. ults where Zoe portal jumps and then get a Caitlyn ult as well. Try to chunk him out so they can get this mid tower. You know, you think about Zoe as a champion that, hey, if she lands one bubble on you, you know, you're going to lose all your HP. Well, the same thing applies to Caitlyn Lux. Yep. A single binding, it's binding, trap into trap, E, into ult, into oh. Let's not forget about the Rumble ult, the Lucian yeah, killing, the yeah, Gale Force, the Cataclysm. It's kind of like the, the full-on, yeah, we can do it too, Zoe. Yeah, but worse. And now Rogue is setting up for this mid-siege. They do still have the Herald at their disposal if they want to, but they're just taking their time for now as the TP comes in from Larson, and it looks like that this mid will be... No? No? Okay. They're probably going to wait for the dragon to spawn 20 seconds and then That's drop it a point. little bit before on the next wave. Make sure they have the push. They can walk into river because Misfits are going to try to walk in and clear vision. So what Rogue's going to do here is they're going to flush them out. Misfits have to make a choice. Contest this mid wave or give up your tier two and take the dragon. Test the mid wave is the call. Neon stepping forward. No flash on him. Cataclysm available for Maran. Could look for the engage. Mercer Force down to about half HP. Well, takes about... The oh Equalizer coming out as well means that he will just have to flash. Rift Herald was killed. No tower is going to fall. Blast got away by Mercer. Schlatten now down below half himself. Neon tries to put the damage across the wall, but... 
BTO not strong enough really to land too much poke right now. It's only the second dragon, so Misfits won't feel too bad giving it up, but a lot of ultimates were used there, mainly the Lucian and the Rumble which are the two biggest damage dealing ones, and Misfits didn't even lose a member, but problem is Mercer has the base, Top Wave's pushing in, it's probably better to just play for Econ here, scale up a little bit, get a couple more items and try to find a better angle. They managed to defend their tower, which is good, but they lose the dragon. Yeah, and again, it comes back to that conversation that we talked about with range. Rogue do have a lot of range at their disposal, and I was curious as to how Misfits was going to handle it, but when we talk about getting to set up around these objectives, we could see that Misfits lost the fight before it even started. They were losing HP, they were losing Flash, and that is the power of range if used properly. You can deny the ability for teams to be able to set up as Rogue now looks no for flash. a pick of the Hirit. Yeah. Hirit, no Flash, nowhere to go for him, really. He's gonna get knocked up with the EQ combo, still lands the wall up the Nar, a possibility, but Larson just dashes away, but Baron started by Misfits. Hirit's gonna try and delay him for as long as possible. No Larson, TPs. no TP. Marang, of course, can EQ across, but how quickly can Misfits do this? They pull the trigger on the Baron. They say, hey, Rogue, They're you can in. kill our top laner, but you then have to come to us. Misfits with a decisive call, but will it be their downfall? So far in this game, Equalizer out. Ace in the hole as well, and Mercer's already down. Odo Omni goes in, pops the stopwatch, thing's gonna land on him, there's a shutdown, it's one. Flash away by Comp, he'll survive. Rogue now answering this fight towards the top side. Cataclysm, stopwatch, Larson goes the long way around with the last code of his own, and another stopwatch comes out. Larson. And Schlatten tries to stay alive, Cullen goes in, Schlatten down, Vito pops the stopwatch, but he will fall as well, you have to feel he gets one in response, and it's all on Neon, but what can he do into the face of three? Larson flashes, Neon dashes, but Larson takes the kill. It was a very, very good play by Misfits, great presence of mind, there's three members bot, let's just rush Baron, we're losing every lane right now. It's our only way back into the game. They got the shutdown onto Oduamne, but Rogue chased him down and they found all of them. Here it's gonna TP back here to see if he can find anyone recalling, stop their tempo, but he's gonna find nothing. He's gonna have to settle with a mid wave and Rogue come out on top. You said it, Cajal. I think the play was smart for Misfits, but the response from Rogue once again was even better. Odoamne just commits his life to doing as much damage as possible and buy time for his team to join. And the moment that they do, Misfits is immediately on the retreat. And that's exactly what Malrang does as well. The key for Rogue here is buy time for Larson to collapse. Malrang EQs in, ults, stopwatches, oh. EQs out. Trimby's trying to buy time as well and then all of Misfits fall. And you can see that Vizio, once again, demonstrating his proficiency on Zoe in particular, utilizing the space very well, picking up as many flashes as possible. The fact that he could even get a kill there was impressive, but when you're at this far deficit, when you're up against this Juggernaut and Rogue, it is not enough, you are shut down. And Larson said to Neon, no, 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 no kiting today. I'm flashing on your face, and I'm making sure that we get that kill. Larson sitting at 4-0-1 on this Lucian. You said it was a signature pick for him when it was meta for Rogue last year. And even though this year his name was not at the top of the All Pro vote, statistically, he is the best right now. Highest damage, highest damage share. CS leads all the way to Timbuktu. This guy has been on an absolute tear. And here he is showing it in game one of this series. VTO pushed back once again, and Misfits pushed back against the ropes. Baron, the next objective you have to think for Rogue. Yes, Dragon's up in two minutes, but that should be pretty free no matter what. It's all about pushing Misfits out of their top side, and we know Misfits, great comeback team, we know they're a great defensive play team, so we'll see how long they can hold against this Juggernaut of Rogue, like you said, Vedius. Neon building towards that third item. VTO still building towards maybe a Zonyas here or some kind of Rabidon to get damage. And here it's just kind of in, he's in limbo right now. Do I build armor? Do I build magic? Who am I matching on side lane? I, I lose to both. I'm getting one shot. He hasn't really found his way into this game yet. Here it definitely has struggles straight from the early laning phase all the way through. He doesn't have his teleport available, currently isolated in the sideline. Of course, the advantage is Odo not having that TP, very reliant on Larson's being up. But right now, it is up. Level 15, working towards that third major item. Of course, Rogue do have Jarvan to be able to tank up the Baron. Uh, outside of that, they do have a relatively squishy comp, but they have a lot of damage. This Baron will melt very quickly if given the space, but for now, all Rogue cares about is finding the pick. Look for Mercer, Cataclysm going in, Larson dashing across the wall, Mercer down to half HP, he's still alive, lock it. Keeps him alive for a second longer, but not for long enough. Hirit's on his way up here. Nowhere near the Mega Nar. Sleep's gonna land onto Maorang, but he can just EQ into the pit. Misfits now need to just poke and prod and see if they can keep Rogue away from that Baron. They find themselves a pick, but Rogue aren't gonna immediately turn to the Baron. They know that that was just onto the support, and while they did get the Flash out from Mursa and the ultimate out from Neon, they're still not confident enough. They need to keep chipping away at Misfits' health bar, keep forcing them back, and they know that the Drake spawns in 30 seconds, 40 seconds, rather. Will they use this as a window to go for the Baron, or will they instead pivot that map control back towards the bop side and look to get themselves their third Drake of the game? Yeah, Rogue don't wanna give Misfits a second to breathe. They could force the Baron there, but if they were pushed off, then Misfits could kind of 
of like retake control of the map, push out mid and get vision around the Strake. So just get that kill, all base, come out of the map and control the bot side, like you said, just swap sides with their vision and Misfits will have to respond once again on the face check. So Kedro, if you could like talk me through how you set up for this Dragon as Rogue, because they're looking to try and gain control, but Misfits are stepping in. Yeah, so Rogue are gonna push mid, they're gonna push bot, wait for Misfits to walk in and collapse on them from different sides. Misfits are losing creeps here, but the second Rogue walk up and collapse, they're gonna have to back away. Misfits look like they're just gonna force it. VTO's on the way. Luckily for them, Comp doesn't have a trap line. And they have a little bit of vision through bot on the creeps. That's where, where they're hugging towards now. So Rogue's moving towards the top side now to make sure there's like a battle line in the middle of the river. As you say, Misfits giving up that midway. Bubble going down. Dragon secured to a piece now. Rogue might still look to the engage. Schlatan here. And we'll have to invest the flash. You have to feel. Gresson Guard goes out. Slow the player goes wide. Schlatan still tanking as much as he can, but the chase is on. Mamma going in. Schlatan is dead. That's Cataclysm as well with the equalizer on top of it. It's just layer after layer of delicious damage for Rogue. They don't manage to take anyone out as Odo Omni is now being forced away. Have been able to disengage. Odo just over the wall of the Nar. A millisecond too late. Wow. How did Rogue keep getting away with so many low health bots? Vito Vito is looking for the hero play. Oh, he, I mean, he did this. He did this in his first game on the LEC stage, but here, the cleanse from comp enough to get him away. Cheeky flash into the trap there, drops a little thumbs up. You can see the damage Misfits have when Rogue overcommits. Yes, you have a lot of follow-up, but when that initial engage is done with the Jarvanel, with the Rumble, the Lucian Culling, the second all of that is blown, Misfits can slowly start to turn, and we saw it there. Certainly did. Let's have a look at this engage. Props to Misfits and being able to set up for this rake. I think the way they answered the control was very good. I do think that Schlatan, what's he waiting for He's trying here? To bait them. Trying to get some damage over the wall, try to live as long as ah, possible. He's trying to get Rogue to overcommit, but then Rogue sit there and go, okay, we'll happily take you up on that offer. They throw the Wombo combo down. Impressively, the ultimate is just a little bit off. It doesn't quite land onto Mercy. He finds that little pocket where he's able to be safe. Is tanky enough to survive the damage? Just barely is Oduwamne able to get away with his health. And now they look for another pick on Dehirit. Dehirit sees them on Mercy. a ward. Ah, here. It's gonna go say. win. Look for the Nar, couldn't quite get it. Mamre misses the EQ as well. VTO here to join the forces of the fight. Double root goes out as Trimby keeps VTO and Hibbert in their place. I have to say, just for raw mechanics, that dragon fight props to Marang. He EQs onto Schlatan, and because his E's on the right side of the wall in the river, he just flash ults in. Really good decision, and then just queues back to where that spear was and gets out as Jarvan on around 10% HP. But now we're on the top side, Larson. Slatan has been a punching bag like uh, final spark coming out, mid lane tower going down, there's the equalizer ultimates. as well. As you say, a lot invested here for Rogue. Trimby at half HP, Ace in the hole is going to come out as well, but that's tanked up by Mercer. Comp oh. continues to step forward here, it's going to try and build up that Mega Nar bar and get himself some health back. Comp continuing to play on the edge of his range here, leveraging Caitlyn as much as he possibly can to chip away at this Misfits health bar, but it is Misfits that have maintained control over the mid-wave. They've been able to gain a little bit of access into the river and steal away some of these jungle camps, so Misfits will now look for the reset as Rogue once again posture around the Baron. Look at the levels of the solo lanes. Yes, Vito's down too, but here it's up a level on Otto Wamne. Who would have thought, despite that early deficit getting ganked on side lane so many times, he's actually up in experience versus the Rumble. Otto Wamne must be overgrouping a bit here to make sure Rogue can contest these mid-waves, but for now, Misfits seem to be holding on. Larson's gonna start up the Baron, though. Remember the, the disadvantage of running the Ignite as you approach the mid game is where you aren't able to catch as much this sideway farm. That's basing. They don't know. Wait, they actually have no idea. Are they going to check with that Scryer's blue? It's on it. They're on it. Maorang Larson just doing this. The Oscar goes to Comp and Odo Amne right now, showing on midwave, showing on wards, walking around as if they've got no clue what's going on. Genius play there by Rogue. They take the Baron. Underneath the Misfits' noses, a seven, well, six and a half thousand gold lead now for Rogue at the 30 minute mark. Look at Malrang's items, Anathema's into Zonyas. <laughs> My man's buying time, <laughs> literally. Wow. Very impressive game overall from Malrang, has been involved in 11 of the 13 kills that Rogue have found for themselves. Of course, Rambo Odoane did get a solo kill, so he was robbed of one of those. Uh, but. Very solid performance from Rogue. I think we're still seeing the standard Rogue. Very controlled, very disciplined, very patient. They haven't really given Misfits those windows of opportunity to make those miracle comebacks happen. And every time that Misfits have been close, Rogue has just immediately disengaged from the situation and not overstayed their welcome. Now with the Baron, they will look to start controlling these side waves a little bit more. I imagine they'll look to try and play through Jump two lanes. Zenith Blade with the follow-up. There's the stun, there's the sleep, and there's a very dead Lux. 
Mercer still low HP, culling off towards the top side. There's the equalizer. Great choke point here for Rogue as Maorang dives in. Schleiss is trying to go up to the last one, but that's two quick kills. Over to Larson himself. Neon and BTO able to walk away. Two Barons down. Misfits walk away wounded. Yeah, Misfits don't want to give Rogue an angle to start sieging with the Rumble ultimate and with the Caitlyn Lux, so they just force it straight down mid. Trimby again gets caught by this Leona E flash follow through. Three for two, but they're starting to slowly burn off these Baron buffs. Rogue going to focus on this tier two mid. Misfits just doing what they can right now. They realize that their best bet is to try and catch Rogue off in their rotations during the setup towards the siege. Try and execute on these flashy plays that maybe Rogue aren't prepared for, but every single time Rogue seems to have an answer. And here we see once again, Trimby just spotted out on the edge of Vigent and Mercer, as he has done pretty consistently throughout this game, looks for the play. Yeah, EQ, there comes the Leona ultimate, Schlatan follows up. The Rumble ultimate was pretty deadly from the side of Otto Amne, but all of Misfits step to the right. The Jarvan ultimate follows up, but Malrang's as good as dead. Larson is the key member here oh, for Rogue that carries the fight because he kills Schlatan and stops Neon from being able to walk up. That Rumble ultimate was less about doing as much damage as possible and limiting Misfits' escapes to yeah. allow the rest of Rogue to then capitalize and shut them down. Now, the Dragon Dance starts once again. Third of the game for either of these teams. Sleepy Trouble Bubble dodged around there by Rogue. Larson stepping forward. Misfits force back. There's a Cataclysm equalizer off towards the back line, but it doesn't really hit too many people. Trimby's already got one, and Barry goes over to a Schlatter. Misfits. Now, what can Neon do? He can open up. GA popped on Schlatter. Neon stepping forward. Larson flashing away. Schlatter's going to be sacrificed here. Larson will be able to escape as well, but here goes Heron into the Nar. Two man stun. One down already. Misfits continue to chase in. Com trying to get away. Oda Wamne doing the same. Remember, Larson, no flash here, will be able to escape towards the top side. That's two kills and a dragon. Misfits are on soul point. 7,000 gold down before this fight started, and they still are holding on even in kills across the board but the objective bounty came in they can catch top wave now as well misfits continue to demonstrate their resilience when it comes to these games even if they're down even if things are looking difficult they will constantly look for plays and here they found another one yeah marang eq's in and ult but then he pops the stopwatch look at the dragon schlatten walks up to him. he's like hang on a second that's mine marang's is in a stasis so here it then gets the meganar vto versus larson off the side the bubble hits to force larson back so it's a three versus four in the river misfits win out larson's forced away they left schlatten out to die here but still here it's re-engage was fantastic it really was this nar over the wall was on vision for a second, swept it away, and then the chase was on. And if Neon hadn't been caught with that bubble, you have to think the chase would have continued there for Misfits. Once again, they find a way back into the game. They are still very much in a hole. 6,000 go down. You can see bounties remain for them if they're able to get some of these towers. But right now, Misfits are showing the strength they have from behind that they've shown us so many times in spring. Yeah, and Rogue have no Baron for two minutes. Their souls in three minutes 30, so all they have to do is just wave clear for a bit now. Look at the items. You can see Rabadons on Vito. Two big tank items for here. It's Blade for Neon. And Larson hasn't even picked up an Infinity Edge yet. And I think in that team fight, we saw something that we did see sometimes towards the end of the regular season, which was that team fight coordination. Rogue seemed a little too trigger happy there to try and make the fight happen, rather than how do we get the best fight for us and Misfits. They just seem so good at finding these windows, whether it be individually or as a team, of where they can punish their opposition's oversteps, mistakes, to find their way back into the game. And, you know, we talk a lot about itemization. Look at this death cap completed for Vizio, level 16. He is a massive threat on this side for Misfits. And with Soul on the horizon, Misfits still have a very clear way back into this game. And speaking about that soul, it's actually been a little bit advantageous for Misfits. An infernal map when you're playing against a team that wants you to funnel into choke points gives you so many more avenues to approach these fights. Yes, there are still choke points. You can still get caught with a Cataclysm Equalizer combo, but when you can just dash out instead of having to get across the wall, it makes it a lot more simple for you to navigate a fight. Definitely does. And let's just talk about how the team fights are playing out for a second. Because as much as Rogue have all this dive, once all of this is blown, Misfits can start to move forwards. And yep. Larson can't really find angles in. You can see a bubble hits, he has to back. If Leona's in range, he has no cleanse. He has to run away. If there's a Meganar in his face or a Xinzao Q3, he has to run away. So Larson has to be very patient in these fights. Next to Comp, despite the range, Misfits have a lot of threats, a lot of spells that can push them back as well. And I will say, this is really where Neon gets lethal. Because Zeri, with the amount of mobility she has later into the game, it's much harder to one-shot this champion, given that she is a little bit more tanky than many other traditional AD carries. She has all that additional mobility, and Rogue don't have a lot of lockdown for this champion, so if you don't do good damage to her early on, Neon could get carried away in the teamfights.
definitely good building towards that sixth item. Also, he picks up, picks up maybe a Witsend or something along those lines with that Null Magic. Maybe a QSS instead. Rogue hovering around mid. Misfits have been grouping all game long. Here it's close to Megan. RBTO has no flash. BTO caught out. There's Kalik from Stopwatch going to stop it. Lock it coming out as well. Here it's trying to get onto the backline. Building up that Megan. Oh, one makes low. But look at the double already on the backline. Now it's all on Neon. Rogue just ripping through Misfits. And Neon just has to do what he can. One down. Slats on the front line. Neon, what can you do in a 1v4? Can you stand up and be counted? It. He steps forward, he forces Rogue away, but still, Neon has to Neon. find something! Ooh. And Comp with a 90 caliber net escapes to the safety of his turret. The ace in the hole will chase Neon away as Rogue win the fight in the mid lane. Oh, it was Neon against the world, and he was winning for a couple of seconds there, stopping Rogue from being able to get this Baron, but in the end, they are going to be able to do so. Four members strong. This should be an easy secure, but 40 seconds on the Dragon. Rogue needs to be very, very kind of cautious about how they set up this objective. They need to base very quickly and get towards the bot side of the map to deny the soul. Wow, what a crazy team fight. And again, it came off the engage of Malrang, catching Vito off guard as he was just looking for a bit of poke in the mid lane. You can see Rogue kind of spread out, looking for that initial pick. Oh. There's the engage. The knockup doesn't land, but the ultimate does. Take advantage of Vito's lack of flash. Notice how much damage in. Neon is doing as the mid lane gets burst. And the, the fight ends up being chaos as Rogue get that initial burst down, as you mentioned, Kadrol. But then when the, the cooldowns disappear, that's when Neon really gets a shine. Again. Equalizer. Final spark, BTO, down to a third HP. Mercer caught towards the top side, Schlatten going in as well. Rogue are just trying to get Misfits out of here. They know if Misfits secure that Infernal Soul, they would be so much more difficult to deal with. Instead, Rogue will get their third Dragon of the game. Whew. What a banger this game one's turning out to be. Malrang finding some crazy angles to engage on. Looking like Canyon right now on the Jarvan, making sure he can find the right targets at the right time and buying a lot of it. Rogue forcing Misfits back now, Schlatten. Oh. Wait, wait, why? What? Why? He blast coned in! He blast coned in the infernal cone! Puts him into the midst of Rogue and the GA will be popped, but Schlatten, that was a horror, my man, as Rogue collapsed, take the kill, and now a man to the good will look to push in the mid lane. Misfits have done such a great job of stalling this game out and finding windows to come back, but that Big mistake from Schlatan means that their base will now fall apart. The sieging power of Rogue's Comp is now coming into fruition. Equalizer and no flashes means a very dead bunch of rabbits. They get deleted under their inhibitor tower. Their inhibitor will fall as well. And Rogue will look to go one to the good in this best of five. Larson 11, 1 and 6, 6 items on the Lucian, level 18, dishing out so much damage, 23 assists for Malrang as well. Here it will try its best, but that's game for Rogue. It was back and forth until it wasn't Rogue with game 1. When you look at the kill difference, when you look at how often Rogue were able to win those team fights, you have to give credit to the fact that Misfits made that game as challenging as they did. And I think a lot of credit needs to be given to Misfits and how Mercer in particular was just constantly yep. looking for pick after pick after pick to just try and stall the game out. Um, but Rogue, in the end, they were able to execute the team fights better. They were able to set up those fights better. And they never really gave Neon that opportunity to really unleash the fights. I'm kind of shocked that Misfits held on for so long with yep. such a big deficit. Have you, have you watched them in spring? Uh, <laughs> yeah. They are a bit of a comeback team, aren't they? But with those early dragons, I thought Rogue would be able to snowball a soul with their pushing lanes. But it turns out Misfits was able to stall that for so long and almost get one of their own. It's very good play from both teams in game one. Of course, Rogue coming out with the victory means that they are just two games away from that upper bracket final. Of course, the loser of this series isn't out of the playoffs either. They will play in the lower bracket next week, but and you reminder yep. that Misfits is the third seed. Yep. So in the event that G2 falls short tomorrow, they would actually even move a step ahead yep. in terms of the lower bracket. Very true. They wouldn't have to make the entire run through the bottom side of that gauntlet, but what a banger to kick us off. Now, Rogue take first blood in the LEC Spring Playoffs, and the analyst desk will dissect this game, and Ro oh, Rodo's umble? Rodo Odo's rumble after the break. Like reading is hard, guys. Okay. Sometimes, yeah. No. Cool. Even the biggest champ needs a break.